video I'm going to walk you through how to paint this moonlit forest path. But before I do that, I've got some exciting news to share. I wrote a book all about painting with gouache. It's called Creative Gouache and it's packed full of all the things that you need to know to get the best results from your paints. Plus a bunch of gorgeous projects to get you feeling inspired to sit down and paint. It's available for pre-order now and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find it. I also have some free goodies available to anyone who pre-orders, including a 20 page gouache workbook with 5 ways to improve your gouache painting today, and there'll be a virtual class at the end of July. So for now, let's get back to painting this dreamy moonlit forest. So each month in the Patreon group, we do the landscape roulette challenge. At the start of each month, I share four prompts for members to combine together into a single artwork. It's kind of like a nice chill way to try something new or outside your comfort zone, and you get all month to work on it. I put them all together in a gallery at the end of the month, and it's pretty cool to see how differently everyone combines the prompts together to create a unique piece of artwork. The March prompts were full moon, forest, ferns, and lantern, and I thought I'd go through a little of my process for coming up with this idea, from sketching to colour testing and some different plan shapes. I started with a simple pencil sketch of what I had in mind. A full moon in the middle of the night sky, viewed through a forest of tree trunks, with some planty bushy things along the ground and some lanterns lighting the way along a path. For me, it always starts with this kind of simple description of what I'm going for, and then I'll kind of sketch it out with a pencil until I'm happy with the rough layout. I tried out a nice blue-green that I mixed and painted a few ferns and textures to see what sort of shapes I liked. And I had a small go at a circular blend for the sky. For the background, I started with a circular gradient of lighter blue in the centre and darker blue around the outside. This will give the moon a nice glowy appearance. Gouache dries quickly, so blending like this can sometimes be a little frustrating. Make sure you use plenty of paint and don't be afraid of using a drop or two more water than you normally would in your paint. Smooth the sky out as best you can, and once it's dried, you can paint your full moon over the brightest spot in the centre. Don't worry if the white mixes a little with the blue underneath, you can just let it dry and add another layer of white to make one side a little brighter. With a watery white mixture, flick some stars onto your clear night sky. Now we can add in some tree trunks, and we'll do this in a couple of layers to give a sense of depth. Make your first blue just a little lighter than the darkest area of your sky and paint a few trunks across the whole sky area. Underneath this you can use a little dark green to give a suggestion of some bushes. To keep the colours all nice and cohesive, this dark green has just a little of the dark blue in it. Give the tops of your plants a nice uneven edge, adding a tiny bit of lighter green along the very top edge where it might be catching a little of the moonlight. Use a small round or a liner brush to add some branches to your tree trunks. Then we're going to repeat the process again, adding another layer of darker green bushes, a path down the centre and some darker blue tree trunks and branches. Now we can give our bushes and plants a little bit of texture. For this I used a brighter green and a small flat brush to create a variety of marks suggesting different plants. My best tip for adding details like this is less is more. You really don't want a random all over texture and you want to make sure you leave plenty of the dark from underneath showing through to separate the plant shapes. 
In the distance, you can make these marks smaller, but down towards the bottom, you should paint a couple of larger plants. Once I've painted the plants, I like to take a little of the dark mixture on the tip of the brush just to blend the bottom of the plants down into the shadows. On this left side, I painted a few of the little fern plants that I'd practiced and then filled the rest of this green area in with some more leafy brush marks. All we have left to add are our lanterns. For this you should start with a small round or a liner brush to add the poles with black gouache. Here I painted three, making them smaller as they get farther away down the path. I added a little hook on the top for the lanterns to hang from. For the lanterns themselves, I started off by adding an oval shape in titanium white. Then I used a damp brush to soften the edges, blurring them out a little to give the light a soft glow. Over the top of this white, paint a pale yellow mixture to create a warm light and finish them off with a bright spot of white in the very centre. Finally, we can add a few touches of highlights on the plants around the lanterns to show where the warm glow of the light is illuminating them. Use a bright yellow green for this and paint just on the tips of the plants around each lantern. 